We come, you know what we come to church for? That we come to learn of Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's the reason we're here this morning is to learn of Him. Every one of us, we've all got space to learn. I've heard people say that they know it all. Well, I'm telling you what tonight, I don't know it all. That's the reason I come to church where I can learn. And every time that we come, I want to learn something. Amen. I want to hear what the Word of God says because you know what? There's a whole world that's worshiping God, but they're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. People today want to worship God in the spirit, but they never want to worship in the truth. Today, everybody says that I'm a Christian, that I've got it, but do you have it the way the Word of God teaches it? That's the reason you have to read your Bible. Not only read it, but you've got to study it for yourself. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. And if it can be rightly divided this morning, I'll guarantee you one thing, it's being wrongly divided too. People today say everybody that's going to go to heaven that says they're a Christian, well, you know what? The Bible don't teach that. How many believe that this morning? That everybody that says they're a Christian is not going to make it. And you know what? We've got to do it God's way. God's only got one way. He said there's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, who's Father of all, who's above all, through all, and in you all. And you know what? We've got to read and we've got to study to find out the way. You know, God, just like I said, God's only got one way. So if God's only got one way, where did all these other ones come from? They come from man. And you know what? The people today will believe anything rather than hear and what the Word of God says. You've got to base it upon the Word of God. Everybody's serving something tonight, but you're either serving God or you're serving the devil. And you know what? That's what people don't like to hear this morning. But you know what? It's the Word of God. It's what God's Word teaches. And that's what I want to go by. I want everything that I do, I want to base it on the Word of God. If it's not in the Word of God, then we better not do it. Amen? But if it's in the Word of God, we better do it the way God's Word says it. That way you don't have to worry about it because you'll never fail if you listen to what the Word of God says. And you know what? Not only be a hearer of the Word, but be a doer. God wants us to hear it. Then he wants us to put it into action, and he wants us to do what the Word of God said. There's many people today who says, I'm a Christian, but they've never been baptized. They've never received the Holy Ghost like the Word of God says. They've never even been baptized according to the Word of God. And there's some people, just like I said, believe that you don't even have to be baptized. But the Word of God, it doesn't teach that. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Amen. He that believeth not shall be damned. So you see, that can't be. People can teach this and say you don't have to be baptized. But if the Word of God teaches us how, that we must, then what are you going to do? You're going to do it like because everybody else is doing it? Or because of the way the Word of God teaches it? I want to go by the way the Word of God teaches it. Amen? Amen. And you know what? When we start, you know, every building, well, we'll get on this, get on the lesson this morning. Except the Lord build the house. And I want you to listen to what the Word of God says. Don't listen to what I say, but listen to what God's Word. This is what God's Word. And this is what we need to base our life upon, is how we build them. Listen to what he says. Except the Lord build the house. Psalms 127 and 1. He said, except the Lord build the house, they labor in what? Vain. Vain. They labor in vain that building. Now, don't you think there's a lot of people that says that they're building, but they're not building it upon the rock? Amen. Amen. Right. They're not building it according to the word of God. Listen to what he said. They that they build labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh in vain. Do you think that everybody that calls themselves a preacher, and that's what a watchman is, don't you think that they that's looking over a flock of people, do you think that everybody that says they're a preacher is really being called by God? No. Of course not. He said many have ran, but he said I didn't send them. So if God didn't send them, then who did? Their organization, their denomination, whatever it may be, it hadn't been God. And if God didn't send them, how can they help people? If they've never been baptized according to the Word of God and never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives others, how can they teach anybody else if they don't have it themselves? Listen, let's go over just real quick to Luke. I got it in my notes right here. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. <coughs>
Luke 11, 52. Everybody got it? Amen. Now listen to what he says. Woe unto you lawyers. You know who? He's not talking about a lawyer that teaches law out there in the world like we think of today. But it was the religious leaders at that time. But listen to what he says. Woe unto you lawyers. For ye have taken away the what? The key of knowledge. The key of knowledge. What did he tell Peter? He said, upon this rock, he said, I'll build my church, Amen. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What did he give Peter? Didn't he give Peter the keys to the kingdom? Amen. Amen? Amen. What have they did today? They've taken away those keys. These so-called religious people in the world today, these uh, so-called Bible scholars that think that they know everything, but they don't know nothing according to the Word of God, they've taken away the very key to get them in. You know what? You can come through that door, but you can't come through that door if it's locked unless you've got a key. Amen? You've got to have the right key in order to get in that door. And you know what? Jesus said, I'm the door. And if we come through that door, we've got to have those keys in order to get into that door. We've got to open them. I can give you a key to that door, but if it wasn't the right key, you'd never get in. Amen? Amen? And there's people that's the same way today. They won't get in and study. They won't get in and read for themselves. They'll say, this is how I believe it. Well, you might believe it one way, but how does God's Word teach it? Do you believe it according to the way God's Word teaches it? Everybody's being taught something today. Everybody knows, they, as they say, they know different things, but do they do? Do they keep God's commandments? Do they do it the way God says to do it? If everybody in the world, listen, now we know, according, according to God's Word, as we get down here in just a minute, let's just go over to Matthew 15, where you got your Bible so open. Matthew 15. And verse 7. Now listen to what Jesus said. Now this is broken in red for a lot of people that said, well, I don't believe it because it's not broken in red. The whole word should have been written in red because it's God's word. Amen. 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 Listen to what he says. Now boy, people really get mad today if people call them what Jesus called them. Amen. 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 But listen to what he says. He said, you what? Ye hypocrites, well did the sights prophesy of ye saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their what? They give him lip service. They say we know him, but do they really know him according to the word of God? But listen, with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their what? Heart is far from me. But in what? There's that word again. But in vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrines and the commandments of who? Amen. Of men. So if we're not doing it according to the word of God, and you're not doing it according to the way God's word says, you're keeping the doctrines and the commandments of men, you're following after man, and you're not following after God. Right. Amen? Amen? You know what? We can fall in that same boat. I'm talking about God's people. If you're not careful, you can follow after man rather than following after God. That's right. Amen? Amen? I want to put my trust in God. Amen? That's the only one that can deliver. He'll be closer than any brother. Anybody that you ever come to today, God will be closer to you than anybody in your life. I'm telling you what, he'll lead you and guide you just when you think that you can't come on. Go on any further. God will come by and he'll help you make what you're going through. If you just trust in God. But a lot of times we want to trust in ourselves. We want to trust in the flesh. But we never want to put our trust in God. But you know what? The only way that we can make it is by putting our trust in God. And having faith in God. You know what? The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Amen? Amen. We've got to believe. Yeah. You know what? We've got to believe God's word. Because God's word says it. And if somebody gets up and preaches and teaches me something, I want to make sure they can bring it right out of the Word of God. Amen? They can have your own ideas, you can have your own opinions, but does it coexist with the Word of God? Does it go together with God's what God's Word says? I can tell you a lot of things that I might believe, that I might have an opinion upon, but maybe it's not according to the Word of God. 
Who would be right? Me or the Word of God? The Word of God would, wouldn't it? And you know what? That's what people don't want to hear. They want to hear somebody, man, a man get up and teach them something because a man might be uh, well educated and think that he knows it all. But you know what? I'm not going to tell you that I know it all. There's only one man that wrote it, know it all, and that's the man Jesus that wrote this book. Amen? I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get there. Each and every one of us, I'm sure this morning, is still learning and trying to get there. But we've got to trust in God. If it's because man says it, and if he can't back it up by the word of God, then that man is wrong. I don't care who he is. If he can't back it up by the word of God, just because maybe he sees it one way, well, how does God's word teach us? Does it teach it in another? So if God's word teaches it in another way, then I'm going to go forward in the word of God. Amen. Listen. Let's go back to the lesson. John 2, verse 18 through 21. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou, thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and three days will I raise it up. You see, they didn't know what he was talking about. They thought he was going to raise this natural temple. That took them 14 years to build it. But you know what? That's what he said. Then the Jews said, Forty and six years was this temple in building and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But that wasn't what he was talking about, was this natural building. He wasn't talking about that. But listen what he said. But he spake of the temple of his what? Of his body. Listen. In Matthew 13 and 23. Now I want to ask you a question this morning. We're all building this morning, amen? amen. But what are you building upon? What are you building upon? There are many people who are building, but they're not building according to the Word of God. And when I say that this morning, if you would build a natural building, now listen real closely, what would be the very first thing that you would do? No. No. First thing you're going to do is find you a good piece of ground. Amen? And when I say that the good the piece of ground... I'm talking about this what he says right here, Matthew 13 and 23. But he that receiveth seed, I'm talking about the word of God, unto the what? Good ground. good ground. So we first got to find a good piece of ground, amen? That seed is where we can plant that seed. And that seed is the word of God. Well, this is what he said. He that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold and some sixty and some thirty. So therefore, first we got to find that ground. We got to be able to build upon that good ground upon the word of God. That seed has got to be planted in that ground. And you know what? When you plant that seed in that ground, it's got to have water and it's got to have light. Amen? And when it begins to be built, then we got to learn what we've got to take off and we've got to learn what we've got to put upon. Last week I talked about the natural man, what it needed to put on. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the spiritual man, what it needs to take off and what it needs to put on. Because you see, they all go together. But listen to what he said. Isaiah 28 and 16. Therefore thus saith the Lord, God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a lot, now we're going to have to, after we get that good ground, we've got to be, have a foundation. Amen? Right. This is what he said. And behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious, what? Cornerstone. Cornerstone a what? Sure. A sure, not just a foundation, but a sure foundation. Listen. He that believeth shall not make haste. Isaiah 28, 17 says, Judgment will also lay to the line, and righteousness to the plumber. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Now when you get that cornerstone, and then you lay those cornerstones out, and you begin to build your house, what do you put up on it? Anybody ever hear of a plumb line? You know what a plumb line is? That's to keep it straight. Amen? 
has to build that house in a straight way. So when we start building our house, the spiritual house, we've got to have that plumb line or the Word of God upon us today in order to build. Amen. You've got to build it the way God's Word says it. Not the way that everybody else is building it. Not the way the whole world's doing it. But you've got to build it according to the Word of God. But listen to what he says. And here's what we were talking about every while ago. Everybody today says they're going to go to heaven. It don't make a difference what you believe. You can believe anything that you want to believe. But that's against the Word of God. Listen to what he said. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall what? Enter. Shall what? Enter. Enter into the kingdom of heaven. How many believe that? Amen. So it's not everybody that says they're a Christian is a Christian. It's not everyone that says I'm going to heaven is going to heaven. But it's those that keeps God's word. Listen. But he that what? Doeth the, will. Doeth the will. There's the key words. That doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? This is a pretty close walk, isn't it? Saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we preach and teach in your name? Listen, and in thy name have what? They be cast out devils. Let me listen to what he says. And in thy name done what? Many wonderful works. Yeah, they've got a lot of good works. But listen to what he says. And then will I profess unto them, I what? Never I never knew you. Now, if God never knew you, how do you think you're going to get in? Did you ever know God? Did you ever come to the Lord and begin to ask him, said, Lord, just like Paul did on the Saul, Saul, when he was on his way to Damascus, and the Lord struck him and said, and Paul began to say, who are you, Lord? And what did Paul say? He said, I'm Jesus. Amen. How many people really know the Jesus of this Bible? They preach to Jesus. They talk to Jesus. They say Jesus. But just saying Jesus or singing about Jesus is not going to save you. It's going to be keeping God's commandments. If you keep God's commandments, then you'll make it. But if you go against God's word, then I'll not make it. Neither will you. We've got to keep God's words. Amen. That's how we know. It's by, he said, if you love me, he said, you'll keep my commandments. He said, for my commandments are not grievous. Amen. And you know what? We don't all teach the same thing. Every time we come to the house of God, and we're not all on the same level, you've got to learn. And you've got to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody's not the same. But every time we come to church and we lead in to learn things and God begins to shine the light in your pathway, then you begin to lay things down and you begin to pick things up. It's a slow process as you walk with God. You know what? God will give the light to you. God will shine the light in your pathway. But you know what? If you see that light, you should walk in that light. Amen? There's got to be a change made in your life. You don't go to the same place that you used to go to. You don't sing with the same crowds that you used to hang out with. Amen? And you don't surely go to the same places that you used to go to. Yeah. Amen? There's got to be a change made in your life. Yeah. And that's, if that's, the, that's the thing that people can't understand today. They think just because the preacher tells them to come down the aisle shaking my hand, they're automatically saved. That don't save anybody. Where did you see shaking some man's hands in the Bible ever save them? It never did. No. Never will. And you know what? You've got to repent as deeply as you have sinned. And if you've repented as deeply as you've sinned, God will forgive you and God will put you on that path. But you're the one that's got to walk that path. And you know what? People today will say just because you come to, to God that your walk of God is going to be a bed of roses. No, your battle's just begun. Amen? It's just begun. That old devil, you know what? When he had you out there, he'd get you caught up in everything. You know what? Because that's what he wanted. He knew he had you, that he could get you to do anything he wanted you to do. But when you come to God, you're going to do what your God tells you to do then. Amen? There's got to be a change. Man. There's got to be an attitude change in your mind. Here's where we serve God is in our mind, in our heart. This is the heart that he was talking about. Every thought comes right here in your mind. And it's what you put in those bad thoughts come to you? Yeah. That when you come to God, then God, the old devil, he's still going to continue to fight you because you know what? Out there he made you do it. You know, you knew who you were serving then. 
But when you come to God and God said, son, there's got to be a change made in your life, you've got to turn your life around. You say, Lord, I'm willing to do what you'd have me to do. And if you let God lead you and guide you, God will see you through every trial and every trouble. And you know what? We've got to trust God. We've got to learn that we've got to trust God more than we do today. There may be a come a time where you may where we've got lucky right now, we've got income coming in, but there could be a time come where you had no income coming in. Then what would you do? Could you depend on God? You know what? You'd have to. You would have to. To be in order to survive. But you know what? A lot of times we want to put this little flash ahead of God. And you know what? That's what I want, I want to say. I say, Lord, you show me the way. And Lord, whatever you may say, Lord, I'm willing to walk in. Just help me because I know within myself I can't do it. But I know with the Lord's help, you can make it. You may think that you did so bad in your life that nobody will forgive you. But God will forgive you. Amen? How many of God forgive you here tonight? Amen. Amen. And you know what? If God will forgive you, I don't care how deeply you have sinned. And I used to hear people say all the time, said, well, God would never save me. I'm down at the bottom of the barrel. You know what? God's got a long arm. He can reach down in the bottom of that barrel, and he can pull you up out of that barrel, and he can make a new creature out of you in Christ Jesus. That's the power that God has got. And God will do exactly what he says he'll do. He'll deliver you of all your troubles. All of your trials. Now that don't mean that you're not going to have them because you're surely going to have them. That old devil's going to come every day and fight you with that very same thing that he tempted you with out in the world. You know what? Even when I was in church, and I used to think many times, and boy, the summertime would roll around, and that old devil would come to me and say, boy, a real cold beer would taste good. You know what I say? Well, it might have tasted good, but it wouldn't save my soul. It put me and damn me to a lake of fire. Amen? Uh -huh. But that old devil, he'll still put those thoughts back in your mind. Things that you used to like to do out in the world. He'll still come back to you and try to put all these evil thoughts back in your mind to try to get you to do it. Because you know what? He don't have you now. When God comes in, God makes a new creature out of you. That don't mean that the trials is not going to come. But he said, I'll put no more upon you than you're able to bear and you know what he said with that same trial he'll make it a way of escape that you might be able to bear uh -huh. and you know what that's the power that God's got and God will do it but you know what how does God work he works through people he works through you he works through me but when God tells you something you're the one that's got to say no you know what that's the hardest thing for people to do today is say no and that's the hardest thing you know what when people when God tells people no that's the hardest thing that people can't accept for God to tell them no but sometimes it's for your own benefit. It's for your own good. Did you ever have a child and raise that child up and you had to tell that child no? Or you might have had to whip that child and it will be that you didn't love it because you whipped it. You was trying to correct it. You was trying to make something better of it that it wouldn't do those, make those same mistakes again. You know what? I just like I said, just like Brother Jeremy was saying, was talking the other night. You know, a lot of times we make mistakes in life, but if we would only listen, if we would only listen to sometimes when your parents would tell you something, and if we would only listen, you'd have never had those problems. Amen? Amen? If we even, a lot of times, and this is the same way spiritually, if we're running around with the wrong crowd and you've got that crowd out there trying to tempt you, that's the devil trying to use those people in order to get to you. He'll use your own family to try to get to you. Amen? That's how crafty the devil is. He'll try to trip you up any way he can. Because you know what? He wants you. He wants your soul. He knows that he's got but a short time. And he's going to take everybody to hell with him that he can. But there's people today that will not listen. But if you only listen to what God's word says. And say, son, listen to what my word says. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. And that same word was made flesh. Uh -huh. And you know what? If we listen to that word of God. And let the word of God lead us and guide us. I'll tell you what. He gives the Holy Ghost to them that what? Obey. Obey. And if God fills you with the Holy Ghost. And God puts you on the straight and narrow way. God wants you to learn from him. Amen? Yeah. And God wants you to lay down those things. When God begins to shine the light in your pathway. And you know what? A lot of times we need to count the cost. We need to count the cost before we even come to God. See if you've got sufficient funds to run this race and set the course. Because you know what? We're all running a race tonight. 
But we're only going to be one that's going to finish. And when I say one, I mean one faith that's going to finish. Uh -huh. But we've got to walk in that light as he is that light in order to finish. Or we won't finish. And listen to what he says. Let's see, where was it? 24. I'll read 23 again. And then while I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work what? Yeah. At sin. Listen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, not only hear them, but what did he say? Do. And doeth them, I will liken to him unto a wise man, which has built his house upon a what? Uh -huh. Upon a rock. You know who that rock was? It was Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen. Unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it what? And it fell not, for it was founded upon a what? Upon that rock. How many of you built upon that rock this morning? Amen. Yeah. And you know what? If we're built upon that rock, those troubles and those trials are going to come. But I'll say one thing. Before, you didn't have that rock. You wasn't built upon that rock, which was Jesus Christ. But when you come to God and you're built upon that rock, I'll say one, the storms of life is going to come in your life. They're going to come. Every one of us is going to go through storms in this life. But if we're built upon that rock, it can storm all at once, and God will see you through Amen. That's the power that God has got. If we would only be obedient to the word of God and listen to what it says and put our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength to it, God will see us through. Listen. And everyone that heareth these things of mine and what? And doeth them not shall be likened unto the what? A foolish man which built his house upon the what? Upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it what? Fell. And it fell, and great, not only fell, but he said, and great was the fall. If we're not building upon that rock, which is Jesus Christ, and we're building upon any other foundation, then that house is going to fall. Amen? Amen? And if that house is fell, and you're in it, you're going to be destroyed. Amen? Because we didn't do it, and we didn't build upon that rock, which was Jesus Christ. That's the only foundation that there is this morning. And you know what? He said it's the only name, only name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And that's through and by the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what? You can go to a lot of different things in this old world. And you look around and see. And they'll tell you today that you can say, God... You can say Father. You can even say Holy Ghost. But you mention the name Jesus and it offends too many people. They'll say, don't mention that name Jesus. You know what? That's the only saving name there is in the Bible. Amen. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If it was good enough on the day of Pentecost, where the church was first originated, and if it saved 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost, what's wrong with it now? Uh -huh. What's wrong with it now? You know what? People are ashamed of that name. People are ashamed of that name. I'm not ashamed of it. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. And if there's people today who will try to tell you not to go down in the water, that you don't have to go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, it's not essential. It is essential for your salvation. If you want to make it to heaven, and if it takes, say, 3,000 souls on the day of Pentecost, then why can't we do it today? If that's the way that they got in, and that's the only way in the Bible that the Bible teaches that they ever got in was through and by the name of Jesus Christ, then what's wrong with it today? People are ashamed of God. They don't want to take upon that name. They know that they have to do things that the world don't like. And you know what? You go you go to look, watch around and see people doing all kinds of things that says, I've got Jesus, but they don't have the Jesus of this Bible. Amen. Because if they did, they'd be obedient to God's word. It's not everyone that says, Lord, Lord's going to enter in, just like he said. But let's go on. Ezekiel 13 and 10. Because even because they have seduced my people, 
saying peace when there was no peace, and one built upon a wall, and one of others daubed it with what? Untempered mortar. Untempered mortar. What will untempered mortar do? It'll fall. If you're uh, using untempered mortar, then it's no good. But listen to what he said. And saying unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall, oh. that it shall fall, and there shall be an overflowing shadow. And O oh, and ye, O oh, great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, and sh shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing where ye have daubed it? And therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will even rend it with the stormy wind in my fury. Therefore shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstones in my lot fury to consume. It's going to be destroyed. Listen. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation therefore shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and then ye shall know that I am the Lord. How many people today is going to wait? Because maybe mom or grandma or grandpa or brother or sister had went to this church. I believe that I'll go to that church. I've heard people today make the remarks and say, well, I believe I'll go join church. You don't join your church. You're born into this church. Amen. Amen. You don't go shake a hand to the preacher and say, well, I'm saved. And I know that don't save you. Only thing that will save you is keeping the written word of God and doing what God's word says to do. There's people today who will try to tell you that you don't have to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They'll say that you can do it any way that you want to do it. The Bible does not teach that. The only place that they were baptized, they used the water baptism, was in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only way, place in the scriptures that you'll find that they baptize anybody in the name of Jesus Christ. That's right. No other place can you find anybody. People say, well, it don't make a difference. Yes, it does make a difference. God said it made a difference. So if God's word says it made a difference, you can follow after man instead of trusting in God, and you'll be lost. I don't care if you went to church all your life. I don't care to go if I went to church all my life, and if I've not been obedient to the commandments of God, I'll be lost. That's about as plain as I can put it. Amen? Amen? So why do people want to follow after man? This whole flesh, if you're not careful, will get you in trouble. It'll get you in trouble. There's a constant warfare going on in the mind. It'll, this is where the battle is being taken place right here, is in the mind. Mm -hmm. The devil and the God, they're trying to get the same temple. They'll say, the Lord will say, come over on my side, do it like I said it. But you know what? The devil will say, no, you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to do like the people do. But who's the one that's got to make the decision? You do. I do. But you know what? These are the most important decisions that you'll ever make in your life. When God says to do it one way and you go against the world, I'll guarantee you what? The world's going to come against you. All your friends are going to come against you. Everybody that says that you're, you're, they're your friends is going to come against you. Even some people in your own family will come against you. He said you'll be persecuted for my name's sake. So look out, when you take upon the name of Jesus Christ, persecution is going to come. You look around in the world today, you can see all these religions, they can all come together and worship together. You know what? They got the same odd, the daddy. You know who that is? If they're not keeping the word of God, it's to them. They think they're worshiping God. With their mouth, they're worshiping God. They're giving lip service, but they're not doing it according to the word of God. And if we don't do it according to the word of God, then why we? Well, I don't want to do something I'm not going to do it right. right. Amen? Amen? What's the use of doing anything if you're not going to do it right? Amen. And that's what I'm, I'm just telling you this morning that there's a better way, that God has made a better way. They may be living in all the life they know, but I don't know. I don't know where I'm not yet. I'm not the judge of all these people. God's going to be the judge. I know what the Word of God says. He said, except a man be born again of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter in. And I believe it with the way the Word of God teaches. So if we're not doing it according to the Word of God, you know what? And I'm not telling you what people's got today. Their fruits will bear them out. 
The Word of God will dig them out. It will show you can see exactly where they're at. God will make everything manifest to you tonight. God will let you know. But you know what? When He lets you know, He wants you to do better. Are you willing to do what God says to do? Or are you going to do it like everybody else is doing? That's the mistake that a lot of young people and a lot of older people today make is they want to do it like everybody else. Right. You know what? This is a straight and a narrow way. Amen. And there's a broad way. Right. And you know what? Just like I say many times, if you've seen a straight and a narrow path that hadn't been for very, very well traveled, if you was walking in the flesh, which, which, which path would you take? You would take that one that's been well traveled, wouldn't you? The world, that's what the world's doing. Because it's been well traveled, they think that's the way. But you know what? That's not the way. I see people, they wouldn't come to a little church like this. They said, well, Yens don't have very many people coming down to that church. Yens must be doing something wrong. You know what? He said, I'll leave you a poor, amongst you a poor, poor and afflicted people that's going to trust in God. And you know what? That's what we've got to do every day is we've got to trust in God. If regardless of what the world does, regardless of what everybody else does, I can't help what the world does. The only thing he told me, he said, if you preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said, for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. And we are truly living in that day today where men will not endure sound doctrine. Everybody's going to go to heaven. It don't make no difference what they believe. If you listen to the world, that's what the world's telling you. I seen on the world on the news this morning that the, this rapper or whatever he is was saying that he was a man of God, a man of faith, but yet he was still singing his, his rap music and everything like that. And you know what? That music is not going to save anybody. I hear people day every day try to say, "Well, we use that music to get the young people in." Well, you know what? If you're not in according to the Word of God, I don't care how many songs they sing, it's not going to save your soul. Amen? Amen? You've got to be based, go upon the Word of God. This is the only thing that will save your soul. You've got to trust in God, and you've got to do the things that God tells you to do. That's the only way that you can make. And you know sometimes when a preacher or teacher gets up here and they say something to people, some people take offense to it. Today, we're living in a generation where everybody's offended about something. That you can't even say anything unless it offends somebody. But Jesus said, blessed is he that is offended not in me. Amen. This is Jesus right here. He's speaking to you. He speaks to us every time we open up this word. God, that's God speaking to you. God's trying to show you. And God's trying to teach you. And show you the way. But are you offended in Christ? Because God tells you to do something that the world's not doing. Do you get offended in him? You know what? He loves those. that he'll, If he loves you, he's going to rebuke and chasten you. Amen. Amen? Amen? That's how you know that he loves you. When you do something wrong and God's there, and then you know what? If you get a whipper from God, it's not going to feel too good. If you're really honest in heart with God. But you know what? A lot of people will override that chastisement. They'll go talk to an individual that they got a lot of confidence in. Maybe he might not be in this faith. Maybe it might be somebody in their family. That's not even in church. But how can they tell you anything about God if they know nothing about God? If they don't even know Him, how can they tell you anything? And you know what? That's where a lot of people make a mistake. When I was a young child, I used to think, oh, I'd like to be a Christian, but I don't know how to pray. Anybody ever go through that before? Wanted to come to God, but you didn't know what to say? I remember a lot of one time I was sitting in the township truck that we was working that I was just a young boy, about 16 years old. And I knew God was dealing with me even at 16. And I was sitting in that truck, and Brother Hankins was in there at the time, and Brother Taylor, and I said, I would like to be a Christian, but I said, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to pray. But I could feel God's chastisement, and I could feel God's drawing power, and I knew that God was dealing with my heart. And you know what? If you just realize tonight that it's just like having a conversation with somebody else and you pour out your heart to somebody. That's, right. That's what you've got to do with God. Right. When you come to God, you've got to first believe that He's a rewarder. He's a rewarder then that diligently seeks. 
I'll say one thing this morning. If you're after God and you don't know where you're at tonight, you keep seeking God and God will open up your eyes. Uh -huh. God will show you the way and God will take things away from you. But you know what? I want you to realize something tonight that God's not going to come and pick you up by the hair of the head and make you do anything. When God shows you something, you're the one that's got to lay it down. You're the one that's got to pick it up. And you're the one that's got to do what God says to do. No preacher, nobody can make you do anything that you don't want to do. I want the world to listen to this tonight. I can't make anybody do anything. Wouldn't want to. But I'll say one thing tonight. If we're doing it the way God says, you'll make it. But if you're going to go against this word of God, then you'll know why it's entering. And that's about as plain as I can put it this morning. That God, listen, you're either going to go with God or you're going to go with the devil. If you go with God, you're going to have eternal life. But if you choose the wrong path, you're going to suffer eternal damnation. You're going to burn throughout the cycle of ages of eternity. I often thought about that rich man. The Bible says he died. And in hell, listen to what I'm saying this morning. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. There was an S put upon that. In torments. He had all of his senses. He could smell. He could taste. He could hear. He could see. But wouldn't it be an awful thing to go to hell and you'd have all these wants and you'd want them, but you couldn't get them? And not only that, but you're going to burn throughout the cycle ages of eternity. Do anybody ever get burned in here? Do you ever put your hand in the fire or touch something real hot? What was the first thing you did? You jerk back. You jerk back. But you know what? If you be so unlucky and go to hell, you're not going to be able to jerk back. And you're talking about hot. You're going to burn throughout the cycle ages of eternity. He said, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. There's not going to be one. There's not going to be anybody that's going to come out, and you're not going to die. You're going to suffer eternal damnation. What are you choosing? Are you choosing God? Or are you choosing the devil? The devil, he'll show you all kinds of pretty things out there in that world to get your eyes upon him. But I'll say one thing this morning. Get your eyes upon God. Get your eyes upon God. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Be obedient to God's word. Regardless of what people's going to say about you. You know what? They called him a liar. They called him a wine bedroom. Did that make it true? didn't make it true just because the world said it. But you know what? He come here for one reason. He come here to shed his blood that you and I could have the gift of eternal life. Amen. That we could have that chance for eternal life. Yes. He loved us when we were yet sinners. Christ come and he gave his life for you. That's how much that he loved you. That's right. And you know what? That's children. That's the only way that we'll make it is when we show God how much we love him by keeping his commandments. Is that too hard a thing to ask of the people to just keep his commandments? It is to this old flesh. Because this old flesh, it wants everything that it can't have. It wants everything that, it, everything that looks good. But you know what? These old eyes can deceive you. It will deceive you. I knew a man one time that he'd run around with his wife and he divorced his wife. A few years later, I was talking to the same man and he came back and he said, John, he said, I want you to know one thing. He said, that was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. I said, well, who did it? He said, I did it. I made the choice. You've got a choice tonight. You've got a choice this morning. You can choose God and go to heaven, or you can choose everything that devil shows that looks good in these eyes. And if you choose that way, hell's going to be your eternity. You know what? Nobody I know wants to go to hell. There's nobody with their right mind that wants to go to hell. Just like that rich man. He wanted him to send Lazarus back. And you know what? He even wanted to dip his tongue, just his finger, in the tip of the water, in his tip of his finger in that water to cool his tongue. For he was being tormented in them flames. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be an awful thing? If they people today could only get out of hell, what kind of a testimony that they would have. But you know what? They're not going to get that chance. 
They're not going to get that chance. And I'm saying tonight, every decision, every choice we make in this life, there's going to be a consequence to it. If it's a bad decision, then you're the one that's going to pay the consequence for it. Amen? That's the reason we need to try the spirits where they be of God. A lot of times people don't want to try the spirits. They want to say, well, this is how I believe it. This is how I'm going to do it. Well, try it according to the word of God. Make sure God's word says it's all right. And if God's word says it's all right, then it's good. But if God's word didn't say it was all right, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't want to take that chance. Because what you stand to lose is your soul. Tonight, this morning, you've got that choice to make in your life. When God comes in, you can say, Lord, I'm willing to do what you'd have me to do. I'm willing to walk in that light as you are that light. Or you can make that decision and say, well, I don't believe what that teacher or what that preacher said. I'm going to do it my way. So many people today are doing it their own way where they're doing it the way God's word says to do it. Children of God's word's not going to lead you astray. God's word will lead you to eternal life if you're being obedient to it. And just like I said this morning, we're not all on the same level. Everybody is growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when God comes in your life, there's going to be a change made. There's going to be a change made. And I'll say one thing today. Even some of your family won't like you. Some of your parents friends won't like you. But that's a choice that you've got to make is which way you want to go. You want to go with God or do you want to go with the devil? That's your choice. And that's what I'm telling you this morning. You've got a choice to make in your life. Are you going to choose God and have that chance for eternal life? Or are you going to say, oh, I can't go that way. No, you can't make it on your own. But you know what? With God's help, you can make it. I don't care what you're going through this morning, where you've been, where you're at. God will see you through. You've got troubles and you've got trials. You've got to learn to trust God. And say, Lord, I'm willing to give it all to you, Lord.